Hey, pack leaders is Hino, friends are protecting Thamus, protecting pack. So I just want to give an update to how I've just been getting to air guns lately, and I'll show you this here. It's the FX Impact, with the huge sumo um, Donnie FL Emperor silencer here, and with the extended 6 inch uh, expansion chamber, 800 millimeter barrel, and uh, let me flip it over. Sporting a one leaf AI night vision scope and a uh, third nine millimeter caliber, nine millimeter caliber or 35 caliber um, round and a using a 94 grain Nielsen slug. So that's it. I've added a um, orca rail down below and there's a tension barrel upgrade and a tungsten hammer. Okay, and I've Tuned it so that oh, there it is. it's uh, the first regulator pressure is at 200 bar, and the second and the plenum pressure is at 170. So it's pretty much maxed out. I think there's a 170 bar. When I go past that, to, uh, I avoid the warranty. I probably have. I don't know if it's the first regulator or the, or the second, or maybe just both. But yeah, it's there. It shoots a lot straighter now with those settings, and hopefully it works for you too. So, just been learning about that, and uh, I just want to show you a video of our hog hunt uh, and kind of just talk a little about that. So, let's go to that. Alright, so, well, actually, I'll do a little thing here so I can kind of walk it through. So, I'm going to play this video. This was last night. Pretty tired. It was dark. Saw the hogs coming out, but I wanted the frontal head shot. Uh, I wasn't comfortable yet because I, I did shoot it uh, at the neck once, and I, and I it wasn't a vital shot, so I didn't want to do that shot again. And it ran off, and I didn't get my pig, and I was kind of bummed about that. So this time I wanted to make sure I had a frontal head shot, and just waiting for it to get in position to that was pretty difficult. Even though I saw them, it passed through my scope a few times, and as you'll see, and it just wouldn't, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't, would not line up nicely for me. So, there you go, it comes through, there's three of them up there, one, two, and three, and they're just very careful, just, they won't eat very loud at all, they're kind of like, kind of skittish, and they're like, oh, maybe not, and someone's a little more braver to come through, and of course, not flutter shot. He, he went behind the bush there, uh, behind the feeder. Uh, kind of just, um, kind of just scoped around the perimeter and uh, just kind of walking off. So that wasn't a good shot. And then there's others that other pigs, uh, hogs that come from other directions. So they got just kind of like there's a few here and a few there, and they just kind of start migrating towards the feeder. It wasn't like a whole pack or herd, just kind of like a family coming through. There's just like I, I think they're all kind of like on their own kind of thing. So I looked there and I was like, oh, you know, it wasn't clear, clear and bright. Maybe, uh, and, and also my, my infrared wasn't, um, the light wasn't like zoomed in, I guess, to focus that, that light was more spread out. So that's why it was more silhouette -y. And then I kind of figured that out later, where if I had pulled that light, I, I would be able to see that, uh, that hog from that far away and not be so silhouette -y. So you see how the leaves on the outside is more lit up than uh, what's in front of me. So that's what I needed. And finally, I was like, okay, where they go? Are they scared? Did they take off? Uh, it's kind of weird. I still kind of heard some rustling, so maybe they'll come back. And of course, there's three on the right side, one on the left. And there he goes, back and forth. And it's just, you know, like a split, like it's less than half a second, a split second. You know, the opportunity comes up for a side shot and then goes away. So you have to kind of be patient and wait till it comes into view. And then um, eventually my pig actually does come. Um, so waiting around, waiting around, like maybe they're just sitting around it. Still see, not seeing that thing. But I can still hear them munching, crunching. So just kind of looking around. Maybe they're hiding somewhere, maybe they're just around. But. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, on the left, something popped up. And of course, he had one, two seconds right there. Not really good shot. Passes by. 
Pretty really good butt shot. Another one there. Now he's not, I could do a neck shot here, but wasn't confident for doing it, so I didn't want to do that. I was like, come on, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Uh, wouldn't do it. And finally, my pig comes on the left, and it was a female pig. About the same size as these other ones too. Uh, about 100 pounds by the time we got, got it down. And it, it actually had a, uh, I didn't notice that at the time, but it had a limp arm. Like, it was only on one hoof when it came out. So you can so, so you, you notice it hopping out uh, when it comes out on the left side. And it came kind of downwards so that I could kind of see that it was kind of coming towards the feeder instead of away from the feeder. And let's see here. This here. I think it was around like 18, 30 seconds or something like that. It started coming out. And I was like, no, come on, turn around, you didn't do it. And then finally walks off, I think. So these, they're actually pretty good, pretty good size. All about 100 pounds each. And maybe they'll come back, wait patiently. And uh, at the time, there's a lot of mosquitoes there. So you bit up on the sideburns, the back of my neck, around here, the chin. And uh, of course, uh, my heart was pumping pretty good at the time. I was like, okay, calm down, take deep breaths. You know, um, when I first saw them. And, you know, the one on the right peak. Maybe another five seconds later, uh, the female pops out. Yeah, it was not a good shot. Took my time. Took my thing. And that's the one. I think that's the one that hops. You notice uh, she? I think her left leg is, is, is kind of either messed up and it's like frozen. Yeah, it, it's on her left side. It's hidden right now. But you see that she's on her right leg right now, hopping with one leg. And your left leg is, is kind of hung up like a, like, a, <laughs> like a chicken or something. And there it is. And so I pulled it, aimed it, pulled the shot. And it just uh, dropped him right there. Um, it was a, yeah, it was an air gun. Was a, but I was actually hoping that um, the air gun would actually be quiet enough. But since the, they're so close to each other, as soon as I hit, I think it's, it, they heard the loud skull crack. And the rest of the hogs just took off and scattered out. So uh, I, I think that what I would like to do is probably, you know, if they're more far away, because I just see them far out in the bush on the right side, and I waited until they come to the feeder. But maybe when they were, they were kind of coming one by one, I could have picked them off from far away, so it's a little farther away, and they wouldn't have heard me as much. Uh, but at the night, the action of the gun is you know, pretty loud, but, you know, it does, it's still pretty quiet, and then you hear a loud crack with the uh, hollow point of the Nielsen uh, 94 grain. So, you know, I've ordered, I ordered a, um, a bullet cast to have a more solid uh, bullet so that it's more of a penetration and not so much of a hit, expand, you know, because of the hollow point, so you hit that crack and then, you know, makes a lot of noise. Rather than, you know, just have a solid one, it just penetrates, hits, hits the head, goes through, and maybe it's a more quiet. So, there you go. Brought home a bunch of meat, uh, show you some pictures uh, of that, and it's uh, good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it, you know, the way we prepare is that we'll have it in water for about maybe three or four days, maybe about the week, you know, if we have enough ice to kind of keep that going. And then whenever we get the time to do it, uh, it drains out all the blood, kind of gets all that piggy smell or whatever the gamey smell out of it. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to brine it for maybe a day or two, and that kind of keeps the moisture in, uh, even on the tough parts of the meat. And then we're gonna throw it in the smoker, and then and then uh, we're gonna have a good old uh, time, a good old barbecue party. And so yeah, I want my friend Drew. Uh, th so thanks Drew for uh, taking me out there and you know giving me an opportunity to do this. Uh, it's pretty pretty fun, exciting, and uh, hope you know I, that that was like the the meat that's gonna pay for the the gun. You know, because I ha instead of buying a cow, it was about the same price. I'd say I actually kind of a little more. So hopefully this will get more meat than I need. Uh, 
for life in a sense. Uh, all I need is a couple of cents in, in, in ammo to, to take more meat out. Alright, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll talk to you soon.